Mm. So the companions of Muhammad, they weren't like out on the street going, Hey, we can get wives. No, come on. They already had wives. It was not forbidden for them to have multiple wives. What they did, they had to divorce wives. Yes or no? No, it was like, oh, not eh. So that you understand what I'm trying to get across. There are a lot of things that we take for granted today because we're trying to put our mindset of the mentality of the people around us, of the society that we live in, and we're not realizing how it came. We're not realizing the ramifications of the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the hukum. It's very important to understand the rulings and the wisdom with it. Because then when you do, and somebody asks you a stupid question like that, you can say, thank you for asking me about my religion. And then when you begin, you're going to be surprised at how quick it'll go the other way. One of two things will happen when I get through talking to them. One of two things will happen. Either they're going to make shahada, or they're going to shut up. And they're never going to do it again. And remember again, I'm going to repeat, this is, I'm only talking about the cases of real harsh attacks and harsh treatment. I'm not saying about the one who just has misconceptions who doesn't understand. This is for the one who comes to you and wants to treat you harsh. Treat him good. Treat him better than good, but then lay it out real smooth and let him realize that what he's got is nothing compared to what you have. In a true Muslim society, where Muslims are practicing real Islam, with Islamic State, you have a much, much better overall community than you do anywhere else. And that's for Muslims and non-Muslims alike. It's just a safer place and a better place. I'm going to end it now by telling you what happened with one person. Not that he was harsh at all, he was a lovely person. But I, but I was reminded just now of something that happened with him. He was in the hospital, and the one taking care of him happened to be a Muslim who had, uh, was a med student and was taking care of this man along with other patients. And the man became interested and fascinated talking to him. Every time I saw him, I asked him about Islam, something else about Islam, Islam, Islam. So I happened to be visiting there in the UK. It was in England. And they asked me if I would go and see this man, just talk to him for a few minutes. So I went to see him. He's a very nice man. He used to drive a truck. In fact, right here in Australia is where he was from. And he's old, but he liked to talk about the old days, what he used to do. And I asked him, because he kept talking about Australia and relatives that he had here. So just one time I just said to him, well, what's your favorite country? I knew he was going to say Australia. No doubt. He said Saudi Arabia. I said, huh? You've been in Saudi Arabia? He said, oh yeah, I used to drive a truck from here to there, to Europe, from this and that. So he had literally driven everywhere. But he said, of all the places I ever went, I never felt more safe, secure, or at ease than in Saudi Arabia. I still didn't get it. I know how I feel when I go to Medina, but I know he didn't go to Medina because they don't let him in. Not there. So what is he talking about? He said, you know, I used to park my rig. That's what he calls his truck and trailer, you know. He said, I used to park my rig. I could leave the keys in it and go over and have a cup of coffee, talk to people, and I could come back. I knew it was going to be just like it was. Nobody's going to touch it. He said, they're Muslims. They won't do it. He said, Muslims there who are conscious of their way, best people. That's what he said. And it wasn't the heat that he liked. Don't get me wrong. He was talking about the people. Because that was our subject. He was talking about people. I said, what do you like best? He said, Saudi Arabia. So I said to him, you know, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach you something. And it's what I heard when I came in here. You were giving shahada. It was beautiful. Because I told him, this is the shahada. You say this like this, you know, I shall do, and la ilaha illallah, I shall Muhammad Rasulullah. What it means, I bear witness, there's none to worship except the law. I bear witness, Muhammad's his messenger. 
he smiled at me and he said, that's all it takes? I said, that'll get you started. He said, I say it every morning when I wake up and I say it every night before I go to bed. I almost fell over. And when we were on our way back, the brother was driving. He said, how come you didn't give him shahada? I said, that brother could give me shahada. <laughs> but it's not about a formal piece of paper, you know. He already has it. He already believes it. We'd talked several times about the subject. I thought he needed to make shot. I didn't know he's saying it all the time. And he said it while I was sitting there. So you don't need to jump up and shake my hand and go there. No, he said it. That's it. Subhanallah. So we don't know really when we're talking to people who might flip and go the other way. I used to be one who used to attack Islam because I was totally ignorant. And all I knew is what other preachers had told me. I had never met a Muslim, never did business with a Muslim. I didn't know about the truth factor. I didn't know anything. It wasn't until I met a Muslim, and did business with him, and watched him and his Islam that I understood about this beautiful deen. So I'm just encouraging you that when people come to you this way, don't respond the same way that they're coming to you. Remember, thank you for asking me about my religion. Islam is built on two important things. Truth and proof. And we have to tell you the way it is. Now, if you don't know the answer, tell them I don't know, but we'll get back to you. Let me get your email. On, or if you don't want to give it to me, I'll give you an email and you can write Yusuf, Y-U-S-U-F, at shareislam.com. That's one of our many websites. And then you can also go to our websites to learn the answers to these and many other questions. Today I posted 15 ayahs of the Quran that are misquoted out of context. And they're used by those who particularly want to destroy Islam. Those 15 ayahs are on one of our websites. And then the explanation that goes with it. Okay, I'm the composer, but I'm not the one to put it all together. We actually have scholars who help us do these things. So if you want to go there, it's called Islam Newsroom. Islam Newsroom. And in the search box, put the word misquoting. Not misquote, misquoting. And it'll pull up misquoting Quran. There's five parts to this because it's very big. You may want to turn it into a PDF file. There's a, click, a button you can click it, turn it into a PDF file. You can print the whole thing out and make a book for you. So that when people come to you with this stuff, you got the answers. Clear answers. And you can even give it to them. So here, read it. Inshallah, this will spread Islam faster than you can imagine. Because Allah can use something very negative to spread Islam. In fact, I've watched it happen many times. But I went further than I wanted to go in the talk, but I wanted to be sure to hit this main point. No matter what other people do to you, you're still responsible in front of Allah to be a good Muslim. <coughs> And I'm making the honor that you hang fast with that. If I don't do anything else this whole tour while I'm here in Australia, except get that one point out to keep us patient, keep us in sabr. And Allah says, In Allah ma'a sabri. Allah be with you. Allah keep you strong. Allah keep your feet in his deen always. And forgive us and give us his jannah. Ameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.